What up, Laker Nation? Yo, it's your boy Kareem. How you guys doing? Man, it's been a little slow day in the um, NBA, but um, I had a lot of running around to do. Um, I'm preparing for my, my trip. Uh, but uh, I watched Trevor Lane, and he did a video, the Lakers' perfect offseason. He said this will be the Lakers' perfect offseason, realistically. And he said he wants you guys to comment, and he want to know what you think about his offseason plan. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to leave, instead of leaving a comment, I'm going to uh, make a video responding to it. But respectfully, you know, I'm about respect, so I'm not going to disrespect the man. I'm going to give my opinion on it like he has his opinion on it. So, and I want you people to also leave a comment and tell me what you guys think. So one, it's, I, it's a lot of disagreement I had with him in the video. Number one, going into the offseason, his way of thinking. Two things he worried so much about in the video was too much outside shooting he worried about. And he worried about, um, he worried about hard cap. So the hard cap is basically, if we have, if we over the hard cap, we cannot bring 15 men uh, can I have a 15-man active roster starting the season? You have to pick up your 15th guy. I guess we could pick him up even after like January 20th or something like that. But after January, I know things around like Martin Luther King's birthday, you could pick up your 15th guy, which I don't understand why that should be too much of a concern because the 15th guy on the team ain't going to get no minutes anyway. You're not going to need them. Not to have a 15 man for let's say three months is is not that big of a deal. And then you still got guys on the two way uh, contract in and out the G League. Where if if worst case scenario, let's say everybody hurt, you could bring someone in. But that normally don't happen. Like so, I don't get why he was so concerned about this 15 starting the season 15 man roster where he constructed his off season plan strictly on that. And he's like, oh, all you could do is a minimum contract once you uh, go over your um, salary cap. So I'm going to rebuke of some of the stuff he said. First, the trade, he said um, his offseason plan, like I said, he went strictly on outside shooting. He said Kuzma, Montrez Harrell, and three second-round picks for Buddy Hill, which I ain't going to say that's that ain't bad if we can't get nothing. But that wouldn't be my... If you're going to say perfect, that means that's something you want. I, there's no way in the world Buddy Hill will be my perfect offseason plan. And you got a lot of other better uh, players out there that you can do better with it. So, um, I wasn't crazy about that. Uh, he... Then he said... He will... Uh, Bring Marcus O back because Marcus O is the best you could get at a minimum contract. And Marcus O, you're not going to find a three point shooting big man. <clears throat> there he is again. His main focus is worrying about three point shooting. We also Marcus so old like a dinosaur and got beat every time at the rim. Once a guy get past our guards, it was an easy layup. So why, and now he's a year older. Marcus so been declining each of the last five years, been getting worse and worse and worse. So if he ain't played good last year, and we're going by the pattern, he definitely ain't gonna play good this this year. It, it, it just what it is. So now you got that factor where I disagree with him there. Where I he said minimum deal, I wouldn't even focus too much on three point shooting. Get the best player you can bring at a minimum deal, the white or JaVel McGee back. Someone who's gonna protect the rim and, and, and once they beat the guards, it's gonna be a problem. Either the guy's gonna dribble back out or they're gonna pass it. So you'll rather that, that's more um helping your team than a, a guy, like I said, you just worry about guys staying out there shooting three pointers. So I disagree with him on that. Then he said, Alice Caruso. Loves L.A. so hopeful, hopeful, and he think Alex Caruso will give the Lakers a discount 
of three years, $24 million. That's $8 million a year. He said, because Alex Caruso value is more at $10 million. He looked at Alex Caruso as a $10 million player. But Alex Caruso loved the Lakers, loved playing with LeBron, and he think Alex Caruso will give a discount at $8 million, $24 million. Three years, $24 million. See, that's a problem right there. For you to even think this man is a $10 million player, and, and, and that's an issue. And so, you rather us not to um, trigger the hard cap in order to bring him back. Because you saying bringing him him one or the other, Casey, I mean, um, Taylor Horton Tucker or, or Alex Crusoe, one of them will trigger the hard cap. So you bring it if we if we lose one of them, it'd be cool. But if we bring both of them back, it will trigger the hard cap. Now, and you said THT the same thing, three year, twenty-four million dollars. You said the same thing for THT. So then you said you'll bring Doug McDermott in for two years, eleven million dollars. Then the the finish out your roster, then you said you bring Dennis Schroeder. Three years, sixty million. You said uh, he's not gonna get the eighty-four million. So technically, Dennis Schroeder, he will only be losing technically uh, one year because he it was four year, eighty-four million, which is twenty-one million a year. But he'd be getting twenty million a year at three years, which I wouldn't give him that. You know, he it, it, he not really losing much, or he basically. Is off like a dis, uh, getting less of less of a year. So now, then you said you bring back Markeith Morris, Alfonso McKinney, Wesley Matthews. Um, when you said you would draft Troy Murphy. Um, and I said Markeith Morris, Alfonso McKinney, Troy Murphy. You you would draft. So um. Now, basically, you have a roster of, and then you said you'll start Schroeder, Buddy Hill, Schroeder, Buddy Hill, Braun AD, and Robin Lopez. Then you said you have, um, you said Caruso, K Caruso, KCP, Taylor Horton Tucker, uh, Wesley Matthews. And um, Markeith Morris and and, uh, and and Marcus O off the bench. So basically, we got two guys coming off our bench. Now, see this 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 is where the logic don't fit in that. Now you got three guys coming off that bench, getting close to. You got Casey Peak and thirteen million dollars coming off the bench. And you have Horton Tucker and Caruso getting eight million dollars off the bench, and they basically logged at that that uh, guard position. Now, where the minutes coming from? Now, one of them guys you paying a lot of money to. What minutes they gonna get? Cause okay, shooter starting. You gonna give Buddy Hill thirty, make thirty two minutes, and you gonna give shooter around thirty two minutes. Braun gonna play. 30, 33 minutes, whatever. AD going to get 30-something minutes. Then you got Robin Lopez and Gasol playing uh, that center spot. Then you got Marquise Morris playing some some minutes there. So now you got three guys. One of them guys is, is, is not really going to get no real minutes. And you got to sit down. You got THT. Now, is he going to sign with the Lakers? I'm pretty sure he's going to want to know his role. And, and Vogel, now if he's going to sign a, a three-year, $24 million dollars, I'm pretty sure Vogel going to at least say, okay, you get 25, 26 million minutes a game, at least. If you want to come to the bench, you're going to get 26 minutes a game. Because I'm pretty sure you're going to have uh, maybe startings or, or big minutes out there for him in free agency. Boom. Let's say agree to that. So let's give him 20-something minutes. Now you got KCP and Alex Caruso. So you got those two guys left. What What minutes? What minutes? One of them is not going to get no minutes. So now, you got one of them guys not getting no minutes, getting that much money. You got a guy thirteen million and a guy eight million dollars. Somebody gonna be left out without getting any minutes. And you paying all that money 
for someone who's not even getting no minutes. So that's another uh, thing that I don't think he really put too much thought into. And then, if you're going to say a perfect off, off season and you worry about the two wrong thing, uh, uh, you're worrying about three-point shooting and then you're worrying about the salary cap of a 15th man that you could get a, pick up a 15th man a, a couple months later in January. How we picked up uh, Andre Drummond, we had a free spot, which I think is better. This way, you ain't having. Why would you? I, don't, I wouldn't want no 15 on uh, guaranteed contracts. Knowing every year is always a buyout candidate. This way, you don't have to cut nobody. I'd rather start the season with, with, with 14 guys and pick up a guy later on during the buyout season. I'd rather to have that flexibility anyway. And and um, I, I'm just looked at my kids that way. Do stupid stuff. Almost. Um, put that on um, rock, but I'm gonna get to a video. So, boom! Now you made that mistake there. So now I would ask you guys: Now, would you rather? Okay, let's say we keep KCP. Wouldn't you rather have a guy? Now we have an opportunity. If we could get now, let's say Dennis Schroeder, KCP. I mean Dennis Schroeder, THT, and Alice Caruso. I'm gonna say those three. Right, those three, Dennis Schroeder, because I think he's be go he's a free, those three guys free agent. Dennis Schroeder, Alex Crusoe, and Casey. I mean, and um, Horton Tucker. Now, we got a chance to get two of the three of these guys: Kyle Lowry, um, DeRozan, and and Spencer Ditwitty. So we could get two or three of those guys, and and one of the guys. That, that we got. I'm just say, wouldn't you rather have that? Let's say we could get two of the three. Ditwitty, DeRozan, and Lowry. We're going to get two of those, and we're going to keep one of the three guys there. So nine times ten, you won't keep, keep Dennis Schroeder. So let's X him out. So let's say now you're going between Caruso and THT. Now, wouldn't you rather have to be able to have two of those guys, Dennis Schroeder, Kyle Lowry, or DeMar DeRozan, and you keeping one of the guys with, with um, Caruso and THT? Or you could pick some someone else up. It don't have to be one of them. Wouldn't you rather you could bring two big, big boys like that in your roster? Not count, I don't even count our mid-level exception. I'm just saying that just as signing. See, see that that that's where, like I said, he disagreed because you have to when you build the team. It's more than one way of winning. All he looked at is three point shooting. Now I'm uh, he said that team is better than our team last year, which I don't agree with. I don't think that team is better than our, our team last year. Robert Lopez is not better than Andre Drummond. Then. Montrez, Kuzma, um, McLemore. I can't say that team is is, is better than than uh, our team uh, last year that we we just just left. So now he said a dream line lineup when Lakers go small. He said AD, Braun, McDermott, Buddy Hill, and I think he said didn't shoot. No, no, I think he said KCP. And he said KCP. Okay, now we play the Clippers. Right? That's a Serge, Serge Ibaka guards AD. Kawhi guards LeBron. Paul George guard McDermott. Patrick Beverly guard Buddy Hill. And let's say Reggie Jackson guards guards Reggie Jackson guard on uh, KCP and see and, and I'm gonna say this now see this is why the why you call it versatility now KCP and Buddy Hill Buddy Hill is, is taller than Patrick Beverly but it doesn't matter because it's not like he's gonna post him up he's not gonna post up you know that so he's still gonna be the same player he is if a person his height was guarding him KCP um, 
is taller, KCP taller than Reggie Jackson. KCP is not going to post up. So his size advantage is not going to matter. So now KCP and Buddy Hill both have size advantage, but it's not going to be advantage because they're still going to stay by the three-point line. They, they, they not post a play. They cannot do that. That's not their game. They, they, they would not do that. Size advantage, it, we know they won't even do that. So now you got Patrick Beverly hounding Buddy Hill. Stand at home with Buddy Hill. Reggie Jackson stand at home with KCP. Paul George guarding uh, Doug McDermott. Kawhi guarding LeBron. And we're Lakers scoring. You, you know, now, this is, is basically a fact. KCP, Buddy Hill, and Doug McDermott is not scoring. We know that. They're not driving the ball. They're not going to put the ball on the floor. they not pretty much going to score because the Clippers not going to double-team them. So now, Kawhi got LeBron, and LeBron not driving and getting to the basket on the LeBron going to do that, and he's going to shoot a jump shot. And AD, he he falls in love with a jumper. And they're going to be hit and miss. They're like, that's not, we're we not really scoring. We we don't got no guys beating no guys to dribble. Clippers, that's going to be easy money for the Clippers. Easy money for the Clippers. Then the Clippers could go back down. Now when you go back down, Buddy Hill don't play no D. Um, McDermott don't play no D. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. It, it, it don't, I just want to uh, break that down. I uh, appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe. It just, when you come to basketball, build the teams. This is my, um, Trevor, if you're watching this, you can't just be a one-trick pony. Your whole free agent thing, even from the draft pick, you you said, oh, it's other guys might be just as qualified, but um, Trey Murphy, Trey Murphy, three-point shooting, you know, everything you went strictly three-point shooting on Every single player on the Lakers, like you, you, you cannot. It's, it, it, you, you need defenders. You need versatile guys, guys who can who can um, beat guys off the dribble, mid range guys. That mid range guys is a killer, you know. And and that's that's the mistake he made. And then by him so much in love with Alex Caruso is another mistake he made. Where you weren't too much worried about a hard trigger and a hard cap. If we lose them, we lose them. Actually, it would be better because we could bring in better talent. Worrying about losing him on because of some some um, hard cap, and then you vastly overpaying him. Took like he giving the Lakers a, a discount at, at at three years, twenty four million. People gonna laugh at you on my comment section even saying that he giving the discount like he doing the Lakers a favor. This man averaged six points, two rebounds, two assists. He's so good. How come he didn't make all defensive team? He ain't make no all defensive team. Only the Laker fans look deep. Oh, look what he's doing. But he didn't make all defensive team. And then you saying THT, if THT come back at three year, 24 million, best to guarantee he come back and, and he give he pretty much guaranteed 25 million. 25 minutes. He guaranteed 25 minutes a game. Now his 25 minutes a game is cutting someone short. He didn't take some of the stuff into consideration. You got to take this stuff in, into consideration and you got to look at all avenues and build a versatile, versatile team. It can't just be a one-trick pony because you, you, a team could easily defend you that way. All you do is stay at home with the shooters and, and you guard, guard your man. And then after a while, now we all know shooters got to be in a rhythm. Now after a while, then you can start sliding some guys who's, who's fast, drop them down on, on double teams. Them guys, if they ain't get, never get into a rim, rhythm, they really going to be fucked. They're not going to start hitting no baskets later on in, in the game if they ain't been doing it all, all game. So, uh, I don't want to make this video too long. Like, subscribe. I'll probably be doing a live tonight. Peace.